It's me, Gavin Sign, and I'm here to make a confession to all of you today. I have been generating AI images. AI has been coming up a lot because it's a big deal right now. We've talked about it at length on the Pro Photography Podcast, and you should check that out. But I said to myself, hey, we're not making the mistake that people made with digital photography all over again, where we just kind of ignore it and hope it'll go away. Adobe knows there's money in being first. So they want you to think that they're at the bleeding edge of AI. But are they really? Today, we're going to find out and we're going to compare Photoshop's AI to free open source AI models and see who comes out on top. Now, today we're going to be focusing mostly on taking our own images and then using AI like generative fill tool to edit them. But it's important to understand that the AI tools now can generate images from zero and not just these mangled hand horror shows that we've seen in some of the demos. In fact, everything on the screen right now was completely AI generated. I was even able to take and then I edited them in Photoshop with my own actions and things like that to give them more film, natural like ambience. And the results of these are, are kind of amazing and, and scary that they're this good. But just like when digital entered, there's no question that AI is going to change the landscape. I have two raw files we're going to look at today, and I might even throw in a third one so we can just see the downside of the corporate aspect of AI and how much it actually censors us as artists. Wait toward the end for that. This is a nice exposure. I'm simply going to come in and we're going to put a 400H preset from <clears throat> my Filmist to collection. Now I could enhance this further by going to the AI tools in Lightroom, or in this case, I'm just going to use a speed mask. If you use my Filmist presets, you've seen this, or if you use my elegant speed masks, there's even more of it. All this does is it lets Lightroom do all its AI selections, and then it makes changes to those selections. We're not making the image something different than what it was. We're not taking people out or adding things or even changing the colors of clothes. We're just doing basic adjustments to subject to background. Let's actually do the exact same same edit, Pro 400H on this next portrait, and just do the AI film retouch speed mask. So what we have here is a couple of nicely edited filmic images with a little bit of retouching and they look perfectly fine. We really don't need AI to change these. That's why I'm using these today because I want to compare what the possibilities are. I'm going to test Photoshop today against an absolutely free and one of the easier to download and use and get started AI generation apps called Fucus. Now it's actually using the open source stable diffusion. And if you go to the site where you download Fucus on GitHub, you see all this stuff. But the truth is you can actually go and just download the whole package, drop it into a folder on your desktop and pretty much start using it. What I'm going to do is link to a good getting started with Fucus video. This is what I started with and we'll let you start playing with this AI image generation and editing outside of Photoshop completely free and see what the actual AI world is using, not just what us photographers are using. The debates against AI and the fakery are certainly valid. Where I have a problem, and I think we all should have a problem, is when people are pretending that generated images are photos, like we've seen in news stories about war-torn countries and things like that. They're not, but let's come back to that. First, let's jump in and see what these generative AI tools do on an editing level. We're not going to be completely generating images from scratch today. We're going to be using generative AI to see what we can do to an image. I have a real portrait I've taken of a real model here, and I don't want to make a completely fake photo, but let's say I'm doing something editorial and I want to change the clothes, not just change the color, but maybe I want to completely change the outfit or something else in the scene. The internet has been making a huge deal of Photoshop's new generative fill tool. Let's compare the generative fill tool to open source models and things that you can just do locally without Photoshop and see if Adobe is really knocking it out of the park as much as they say. Here I've put some keywords in and and I've selected the area that surrounds the swimsuit. And I'm just going to say generate this. We have three variants. So it does these variants here and you can select which one. It looks kind of cute. It did change the swimsuit, but it completely looks fake. Let's come over to this in browser app, Fucus. When you're doing your own AI editing, you can actually download models from a site like Civit or something like that. And fair warning, a lot of people use this for more than just swimsuits. And when you sign up for this site, you can put filters on if you want. Now I've loaded up Fucus in the browser and I've selected the model. So I've loaded it in realistic photo mode. And then I used one of the other 
photo models that I downloaded from Stivit to refine that even further. And there's tons of settings and controls and stuff that you won't get in Photoshop. But basically, I left it on the native mode that this app will open in if you go to natural photo mode. You can see I've taken the same photo and that Photoshop didn't invent generative fill. This, If you look at the options down here, you can use a traditional image prompt, which is building from scratch. You can do an upscale or a variation of an image, or you can in-paint or out-paint, which is selecting an area of a model and generating. You can see down here, there's a few options. I've selected the modify content option and I've put the exact same keywords. You also don't have limits. So I can generate one or I could generate 50. So if I was doing a session and I just wanted some ideas for that session, I could put in keywords for the session, tell it to make 50 different images and not use those as my photos, but use those as inspiration and ideas that were randomly generated. I've selected, I've entered the keywords and generate. This depends on the power of your machine because it has to go through and move it to your GPU. It's mostly GPU based. Nothing's being uploaded to the cloud here. You downloaded models that people created and then it is building that image. In this case, only the area you selected. So it's going to modify the area you selected and then merge it in with the image. And you're seeing that entire process. Probably takes about a minute to generate these and we will compare them to Photoshop. And here are our results from Fucus and the models I have installed based on the exact same keywords. You can see it did four variants of a swimsuit. Again, let's go back and look at our variants in Photoshop. And okay, I mean, there's really no contest. I wouldn't use any of these for anything other than, than goofing around. Yet these, I could make variants of this and say, yeah, this is the photo and it actually feels usable if I was doing editorial art or something like that. So you can see various iterations of this look on the same scene. And some of these are act, some of these are actually very detailed and intricate, although maybe not entirely real in the way that the fabrics are blending in. All right, just for fun, let's try this on another photo. Now, in a real session, I probably wouldn't do this, but I wanna see what the capabilities of these are. And I think it's really important that we're honest with how we're editing these photos. I edited this with a 400H look and Filmist 2, and it looks good, right? But what will Generator Fill do? Let's say my model wanted a dress scene here. Let's use Generator Fill and put flowing dress, nothing more, and let it generate the rest with its own AI ideas. It's worth noting that Photoshop is a lot faster and that's because it's uploading things to its own cloud. But of course you have to pay for this. Okay. These are interesting. The hands are completely mangled in Photoshop and a lot of the better AI photorealistic models now can do hands just fine. Uh, this is kind of cool. It's probably the best one with the hands behind. Whereas in the other one, we just took the clothes and we left the legs and the arms and everything alone. In this case, it's actually going to be replacing the entire body. So we're turning into something that's very AI. I'm just going to put the same prompt, flowing dress under modify, add objects, change background, etc. And we're going to make three variants just like Photoshop did. This is all just running in browser from the package that we downloaded and then you can install other mods and models to that package to dial it in. Both of these are having a difficult time because I replaced everything and the way my selection was around the neck, it seems to be giving trouble. You can see that it's doing a really good job here. The dress is much more natural, but it's glitching around the neck where my selection was. This one's a little better. This one's actually pretty good, but I think the neck is more elongated. Again, let's compare this to our Photoshop variants, which have the same problem with the neck. What if I select it a little bit better? I, okay, back in the browser in Focus, and you can see that our ability to like zoom in and control the selection is much more limited. I've done the main model with a very basic selection just like the other, and I'm gonna try to be a little more precise about not cutting too far into the neck so it can try and make a decent transition. Same prompt, elegant flowing dress. Okay, they're both done. Let's see how we did. Here's our Photoshop versions and it's coming up with some wild fashion choices in the way it's mixing fabrics and stuff like that. The hands are just frightening. It's terrible. As I've l shown you looking at this before, it does crazy things. It's putting kind of random stuff in here. It tried to connect up to the neck. We had a little bit of a difficult selection, right? Because I had to cut really close. Whereas on the other model, I basically just kind of selected the areas where the clothes would go and it changed the clothes. The problem is like nothing about the body shape or anything, the hands. Let's look at how we did in local AI generation. This one's a little weird. 
the better selection did help, but it's definitely kind of giving this elongated neck. It's retaining the color, uh, the, the color grade that I did from Filmus, the Pro 400H look from that. Doing really well overall, and it's doing much more of a natural intent with the clothes that it's putting on. But you can see the legs a bit weird, the hands going through the dress on this one. Let's look at the next one. Okay, this is a different story. The neck is still a little bit elongated, but this looks beautiful. The hands look natural. Uh, the skin tone matches the model and the color grade. It needs a little work here in the neck, and probably if I continued to play with the selection a little bit, this one it messed up a little bit. You can see, again, having problems, just like Photoshop around that neck area. This one is, is actually really close. This is our best shot here from Fucus, and I guess this is our best from Photoshop, but it's completely unusable. Do the same kind of thing. We're going to do a full a full body in this scene, but we're going to completely change it, right? So I'm going to select everything up to here. We should have less of a problem around the neck on this one here. Let's do another full body edit, but make sure our model is being left alone. Let's go to generative fill and use something a little more edgy this time, like lingerie. Okay, I'm using very simple prompts just to keep this simple. We encountered an issue. Please view our guidelines. If you think this was an error, provide feedback. So no, lingerie is not allowed in AI Photoshop. And this is a common problem with these, even if you're doing something benign. Let's try this in Focus with the in paint, out paint. And again, I'm just gonna come in here. This should be a fairly simple selection. I can adjust the size of my painting brush here. So we're selecting the dress, the hands, everything, leaving the model alone. And no, there is no censorship. So we have to be responsible Responsible. Just like I think it's important that we're honest about whether an image is real or edited or artificial, it's important to be responsible with how we're making images as well. I think ethically in photos, for example, if you had a model that was very conservative and only posed in a very conservative dress and she hadn't approved of it, you shouldn't be doing edits that put a, a swimsuit, a bikini, lingerie, something like that. So I'm only doing this on models that approve of posing in those kind of things. But what we're doing here with in paint and out paint is almost as simple as what we're doing in Photoshop. While the selection tools and things aren't as advanced, I'm actually not having to prompt hardly anything. I'm not changing a lot of settings. I've just set up the models and loaded the software. All right, it looks like it's done. First things first, the local AI actually did it. There's no corporate rules put in place. We can decide how we want to handle it and be responsible adults in making our art. And it did put lingerie on our model here. Now, obviously the only thing that's really the same is the face. I wouldn't normally like editing a photo this much. I would use this as like wardrobe guidelines, as posing testing and things like that. And I think AI is going to be a very powerful tool. And I think we should know it because it's here, whether we love it or not. This one looks a little weird. I mean, it's there, but the body doesn't quite line up. But look at how good it's doing the hands and stuff. Photoshop can't even come close to this. This one, again, the, the tone, it didn't quite detect that we had this kind of bright sunlight on the face. Look at the way there's sunlight on the photo. It's illuminated really nicely in the original photo. This here is probably the most natural, but still, the body doesn't quite match the head. It couldn't quite nail it, but I'm giving it pretty hard stuff to work with, I admit, and Photoshop wouldn't even do this. So conclusion, Photoshop's generative AI tools are downright primitive compared to even free open source models happening in artificial intelligence generation right now. I have no doubt that Photoshop, with its market dominance, will continue to improve. So today we started by just using the AI tools that are in our apps to help us edit. That's different. We're not editing an image. Then we did kind of the middle level, which is to use AI to change things in that image, but still trying to retain our pose, our image, our models. The third step that we didn't really get into today is that you can completely generate images from AI. And I mentioned that a few times throughout the video. Now we shouldn't pretend that these are photos, but it doesn't mean it's not useful. It doesn't mean we can't use it for conceptualizing, for working on new ideas. And we shouldn't pretend that it's not going to be used for stock photography and things like that and completely transform that market. I'll put a few resource links in the comments. I'll also put some links to the completely non AI tools like film presets, and you can download some of those free presets on my site or get the complete packs if you want to support my work. Everybody, you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If I don't see you again on here, thank you all for being here. Please hit that like, subscribe button, stay safe, love your neighbor, and we'll see you next time.